What's good, Josh? Boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out the night the shield died by none other than wrestling gifts, man. This was a legendary night. I remember watching this live. Show's about to end. And then Seth Rollins pulls out the ultimate betrayal by stabbing the shield members in the back. And I remember vividly there was one guy in the crowd that recognized what was about to happen. If you go back and watch the clip, you'll hear that one person in the crowd say, no, this was such a great moment. The shield was on top. They beat evolution. I want to say back to back pay-per-views. They beat evolution twice. Evolution couldn't really get the best of them. So you were wondering where they were going to take the feud. And this was probably the perfect decision. Them turning, him turning was one of the greatest things they could have ever did. It was so good. No one expected it. It was great. We're going to check this out, man. Uh, appreciate all the love and support you guys have been showing on the channel. Let's go down memory lane. It was November 18, 2012, and it was just another cold Sunday night in Indiana. And what started off as just another pay-per-view in the WWE ended with a moment that would go on to change the future of wrestling. Mm -hmm. Three men in all black popped up from the crowd during the main event, and before you knew it, Ryback was getting put through a table, everything was destroyed, and these three men came off looking like the biggest savages in the company, oh, and man. the wrestling world was set into a frenzy. Yep. The Shield was born 10 years ago, and this was a group that was instantly beloved. You had three guys who looked like they didn't give a fuck casually wearing tactical vests, black gloves, cargo pants, and they would go onto the ring, and they did whatever the hell they wanted. And what made it so cool was most of us had no idea who the hell these idiots were. This was mm -hmm. before the NXT was aired on the WWE Network. This was before everyone and their mom knew who were the up and coming stars in developmental. Majority mm -hmm. of fans back in the day just watched Raw, sometimes Smackdown, and that was it. So when you suddenly turned on the program and you saw these three taking over, it was a trip. And yet eventually the Shield was just running shit in the WWE. By January, they were beating up The Rock. By February, yep. they were beating John Cena on pay-per-view. And as soon as the Shield made their debut everyone knew that this was something special everyone knew that this wasn't just going to be another young group that tweaks for a little bit and then comes and goes and is forgotten this was different these were three guys that the wwe actually believed in these were three guys that the wwe saw as their future this was the wwe's attempt to make up for the lost generation from 2006 until 2012 the wwe struggled to create a new generation of legit main eventers and even though in the long run some of them did work out from 06 until 2012 it it literally looked like they forgot how to make legit main eventers. Mm -hmm. The future of the WWE <clears throat> post John Cena looks so bleak. But then the shield was in the cut and it was a scary sight. Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, and Dean Ambrose became oh, the next generations. These were I the faces of the future. <laughs> and they walked into WrestleMania 29 and they looked like they belonged. And as the yeah. months went by, they just became better and better. And every time they went into the ring, they were going to put on a banger match and their crowd was going to be invested. And the most important thing was during this time, so many kids who started watching wrestling in 2008 and 2009, they were getting older. So to them, they thought these guys were so cool. To a generation of wrestling fans, these were their guys. These were their anti-heroes and savages. These were their favorites. So to the younger dem- This was one of those scenes where the, it was lightning in a the bottle. They, all three of them became world champions. That's a rarity in a group. But all three of them became world champions. You got one who's pretty much the top guy in a whole nother company. You got Seth Rollins doing some of his best work <laughs> right now on Monday Night Raw and just within the past year, year and a half. And you got Roman Reigns, who is arguably, <laughs> you know, on top of the wrestling world, bro. All three of them, respectively, have brought something to the table. And it's just cool to see how they all started out together in the Shield and, and, and how things changed demographic they were all in on the shield like yo for the guys born in 04 05 06 like these were their homies and then for people my age we were teenagers we're entering high school of course we love this and then for the older fans yo they loved it just as much for them they saw seth rollins as tyler black way back in roh they saw dean as john moxley and czw just casually dying back in the day <laughs> you know, they never would have thought that the people they saw wrestling on a 240p youtube video back in 2006 some random idiots wrestling in a <laughs> this far in the wwe 
but they did. It was literally the perfect storm. And by the end of 2013, after US titles and tag mm -hmm. titles, amazing matches and everything, the Shield had lived up to all the hype and all the expectations. They had been a group on the main roster for 14 months and they did better than anyone would have ever imagined. And as 2014 was coming closer and closer, speculation of the Shield dying that came as well. After 14 months of dominating on the main roster, of course, just like every other group, just like every other team, the whole question came up, is it time for them to break up? Is it time for someone to turn heel? Is it time for the Shield to finally die? Because yo, they won championships, they did their thing, you know, maybe it's time for them to go their own separate way. So yeah, after 14 months, as 2014 was almost here, many started believing that it was finally time. But in 2014, they were actually about to reach even higher heights. Mm -hmm. 2014 came and this was a year that every single person watching WWE, no matter the age, no matter where they were from, no matter what, every single person eventually became a fan of The Shield. These guys were so yep. elite. The Shield was so elite that they made every single fan into believers. Even though they spent a year beefing John Cena and CM Punk being the hitman for the authority, it reached a point in January of 2014 where everyone was like, alright, I, I guess I'm a fan. And in every single month of 2014, the shield just got hotter and hotter january had the royal rumble where the shield all went in and they put in work and they were the highlights of the match and once the fans realized that daniel bryan wasn't in the match mm -hmm. they cheered for roman reigns like he was prime stone <laughs> steve Austin. and that's crazy that was one of the first times like they actually well no they were cheering for them all but the the, the praise he got there because daniel bryan wasn't in the royal rumble Vince already was, already got excited. Oh, yes. Oh, I like this, this, this Roman guy. He's part of the Samoan family and the people love him all. You already knew. Once this happened, oh, you knew, they, you knew it. You knew Vince was going to strap a rocket ship and take him to the moon. Only problem is it, it didn't really work out like you probably expected it to, but I do remember him being very over in this situation here. Austin in there. But that was just the beginning. February, The Shield versus The Wyatts. One of the Woo! best six-man matches I've ever seen in so my good. life. The Shield was up against another trio that was taking over and at an elimination Oh my chamber, God, this was so good. The house this down. was the so good. The Shield went out there and put on a GOAT performance. Their crowd was tweaking. The rest was doing some of the craziest things I've ever this seen. This was so, so good, fast bro. Pace, so fire. And even though The Shield lost this match, they still look like a million bucks and got even more Fantastic match. Them. And then in March, The Shield, after being in the company for 15 months, once they finally turned face the shield reached the peak of being a heel where they were so cool they were so badass as heels that the fans had no choice but to love them mm -hmm. and finally in march they turned on the authority when they disobeyed corporate kane and rebelled and officially became faces and in april the shield walks into wrestlemania 30 as faces the crowd was in the palm of their hand and in just in two minutes and 50 yep. seconds Took care of business. They win their match they stand tall as they're surrounded by 75,000 wrestling fans going absolutely crazy for them. Then came May and the Shield after Mania got into their biggest feud, their most hype feud, and their best feud. Triple H, Randy Orton, Batista, Evolution was back and they were going to yep. fight against the Shield at Extreme this Rules. It was the match past too. versus the future, three oh, legends against so three future legends, and at Extreme Rules 2014, even though Blue Tista was in full effect, it, it didn't matter. The Shield put on a performance of a lifetime and in a certified class, Classic with the entire wrestling world behind them, they beat Evolution. 17 months into their run, the Shield was on top of the world. 17 months into their run, they were hotter than ever, they were better than ever, more merch was moving, every week there were more signs by fans in the crowd, every single week the fans were louder, and in a wrestling world where CM Punk had left the company and mm -hmm. Daniel Bryan had to step away from surgery, the Shield became no doubt the hottest act in the WWE. The company finally did something, something they had been waiting for for almost a decade. They finally elevated some wrestlers to the point where they would be top stars. They finally made up for the lost generation and they had three certified main eventers. Mm -hmm. So then on June 1st, it was WWE Payback and it was the rematch with The Shield and Evolution. And of course, they put on another banger. Such and a the good Shield match. swept Evolution by eliminating them all yep. one by one. one. The oh, Shield had so destroyed good. Evolution. They were now the top dogs in the company. They were hotter than ever. They were more popular than ever and after everything they have done they were finally on top of the world every time they came out this was such a good setup because no one saw this coming they beat them back-to-back pay-per-views took them out you know now you're like all right what what are they gonna what are they gonna do now 
no one saw this coming, bro. Just no one saw the turn coming. The internet was well, at least I didn't awesome see it. They were every time they came out, their crowds were going crazy for them, and they reached the point where people were talking about how they never want the shield to break up, how this was the perfect group, how this could be this generation's of the four horsemen, and it was so refreshing. In a time where everyone wanted every single group or every single mm -hmm. tag team to break up, it wasn't like that for the shield. They became so elite in 2014 that everyone just forgot about what they were talking about in December and January. Because now, by June of 2014, they were up there, right? They were the most popular faces in the company after John Cena. They had reached the top, and they became more popular than anyone could have ever imagined in 2012. Everything was perfect. I mean, yo, in May of 2014, you had Seth Rollins in an interview talking about how there's a lot of life left in the Shield. And of course, it made sense. They had just turned face, and everything was better than ever. Even Jim Ross was like, yeah, let's wait a year before we talk about breaking them up. Mm -hmm. There was no doubt that the Shield was at their absolute peak, and after sweet Sweeping evolution in that match at Payback, every single fan was anticipating to see what was going to be the Shield's next chapter. Oh boy, this was so good, bro. This was good. This was so fucking good. I never saw this coming, bro. It was June 2nd, 2014, and it was a warm summer night in Indiana. Live from the Gainbridge Fieldhouse, the very same arena the Shield made their debut in 18 months ago. It was Monday Night Raw. Leading up to the show, there was not much news on what was actually going to go down. The preview on WWE.com was basic as usual. On other sites, it was reported that this would be Batista's last night in the company on his current run. Other articles with potential spoilers and previews were like, yeah, The Shield is likely in the market for a new prey as well. Let's see what they do. Let's see what happens. It was supposed to be just another episode of Raw. Raw begins and the first thing that happens is Batista waves goodbye to the WWE and makes his exit, leaving mm -hmm. Triple H and Randy Orton all alone and they don't want to end their beef with the Shield just yet and Triple H says he will not stop until the Shield is dead. But the show goes on like every other Raw from 2014. We got some Stephanie promos in there, we had Bad News Barrett, it was the usual. And as the night went on, we didn't see the Shield or anything, but we did find out that the main event of the show was going to be Randy Orton versus Roman Reigns. So the show continues. And and then it was finally time. With only 11 minutes left in the show, it was 10.49 p.m. Eastern, the Shield finally came out from the crowd. The fans were going nuts, Roman Reigns gets his introduction for the match, it was Monday Night Raw, it was live from Indiana, it was the main event, it was going to be Randy Orton versus Roman Reigns. The Shield gets into the ring and everyone is chilling, everyone is calm, <laughs> Dean Ambrose gets the mic and cuts a promo, even Rollins says some words, and then Roman Reigns drops this line. The men standing in this ring are brothers. At this point, there oh were six God. minutes left in the show, and we knew that we weren't going to get a match. Maybe we'll get a brawl or something. Yeah. Maybe some young talent might join Randy and Triple H. Who knows, right? Whatever. It's just another Raw episode, right? So Triple H comes out with Randy Orton and his good old-fashioned sledgehammer. Seth sees that and instantly goes out of the ring, gets some chairs, and he's ready for beef. And of course, the Shield is ready for beef. Mm -hmm. So Triple H and Randy are outside the ring. The Shield is inside the ring. They're standing side by side, just like how they have been for the past 18 months. This is so and then Triple H gets the mic and says, Last night was plan A, tonight is plan B, there's always a plan, plan B. B. And ladies and gentlemen, it this was is, as if time stood still. This was and so all you good. hear is... <laughs> I told you, all you hear is... No! <laughs> he... Oh, I was with him. I was like, wait, no, don't do it. <laughs> that no will always be remembered for this segment right here. That, that is a legendary scream of no. Oh, are you? No! <laughs> As the fans scream for his life, Seth Rollins hit Roman Reigns in the back with a chair, Dean Ambrose looks like he had just seen a ghost, and Rollins looking like a stone cold killer this goes was absolutely so mental good. on his former brothers. He proceeds to beat the shit out of Dean and Roman so hard that the chair bent, and it was one of the most shocking, one of the most out of oh left field things God, in WWE so good, history. Bro. Nobody saw this coming, nobody, nobody was hoping for it, nobody wanted this. For this once there was so a team good. that the fans didn't want to see implode, the shield was at their peak. The night before, they had just beat three legends. They were at their best, they were at their hottest, and just when you thought things were only gonna get better, Seth Rollins 
turned on them. Oh. Seth Rollins, the last person anyone expected, and that's what made this moment even crazier. Everyone thought when the shoot was finally mm-hmm. going to end, when someone I was, was finally going to turn, it was probably going to be Roman was, Reigns or Dean, Dean Ambrose. Yeah. The time was right. It was going to be one of them. Dean was the crazy one. Roman mm-hmm. Reigns was the chosen one, right? It has to be one of them, but nah. The crowd was silent. They were in shock. They were shook. There was no cheers. There were no boos. They just couldn't comprehend what the hell just happened. Meanwhile, Rollins was in the ring just going off until the chair was broken. After 18 months alongside these men, he aligned himself with Triple H and Randy Orton. And on God, this was a top five most shocking ending in Raw history. Facts. Yo, this was just a special moment. This was one of those things that you never saw coming. And the second you did, the second you realized what was about to happen, it was too late and your heart dropped. The moment when everyone walks up, Roman and Dean and Seth stands there in the back, it's like, oh no. Legit one of the most brilliant things that WWE yeah, had ever this was done. So when nobody good, expected bro. it. When everybody so thought the shoot was just getting started and they were gonna keep getting better and better, they ended it. And it is so hard to describe how shook the wrestling world truly was. I'll never forget seeing Twitter blow up, even Facebook was popping back then. Even though wrestling <laughs> school was crazy. I remember people coming to me who casually watch wrestling. You know, they were hardcore fans back in the day, but they kind of stopped now. Even they were coming up to me like, yo, what happened last night? Why do you do it? Who, what, where, what? Everyone was tripping. Dear Diary, wrestling was sad to me. <laughs> Seth Rollins just broke my heart. Honestly, I was expecting anyone but Rollins to turn on the shield. I am legitimately dismayed. It's like someone has died. Rest in peace, the shield. This, I want to go back to payback season where everything was predictable and made sense and my heart wasn't broken. F- you, Seth. Holy hell, did that really just oh. happen? That was an amazing turn of events. Props to the WWE for pulling something so good, gold like bro. that. Yo, imagine being like 8 or 10 years old and you were watching Raw and these were your favorite wrestlers. Like you grew up and even though guys like Cena and stuff drew you into the company, these three became your guys, right? These became your favorites. This was your group and these were the guys that made you fall in love with wrestling. And on a random Monday night without any signs, without any warning, just when you thought everything was perfect, this happened. Even for me, at 15 years old, this hurt me. This had me feeling some type of way. You saw the group <laughs> grow. You saw them develop into these elite yeah, personalities. Yeah, this was such a good moment, bro. It slowly made the entire such a good believe moment. in them, believe in the shield. And after 18 months, 18 months of them doing their thing, it was the end on a night that was supposed to be just another Raw. It was supposed to be the night where the shield went into their next chapter, but it ended up being the night the shield died. Mm-hmm. What a moment and what a time to be alive. And the craziest part about this night was they shield themselves, Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, and Seth Rollins. They didn't know it was ending until they walked into that arena that very night. Oh, wow. What a moment, man. What a moment. In the comments down below, let me know your memories of that very That's night. man, bro. This was a, another good video by Wrestling Gifts, man. Uh, dog, this, that moment will always be a moment i can be like yo i i remember sitting there just in complete shock i could not believe what i had just saw i i literally was shocked i was like they actually split them up after them being on this high they ended it just like that man this was great this was a a a moment where you know like I, i can't even put it into words like if you just watch the shield from the beginning and how they grew as a group and how people begin to really care and want to see more of them to how it ended you would just it was it was crazy you didn't think it was going to happen at least that soon or at all you know or even you didn't think it was going to be Seth but this was such a monumental moment for WWE bro man so comment down below let me know what was your thoughts like when it initially happened were you shocked could you not believe what was what was happening in front of you like were you sad was you were you (laughs) just hurt and distraught because i know for myself i was definitely i was like oh my god this is i don't know why this hit me a little bit but it made me tune in even more to monday night raw and seth rollins went on arguably one of his greater runs in his career but i appreciate y'all kicking it with me see y'all on the next one Peace.